please stand. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Welcome. In the name of Jesus, the Savior of the world, we are gathered to worship, to proclaim Christ crucified and risen, to remember before God our brother Curtis, to give thanks for his life, to commend him to our merciful Redeemer, and to comfort one another in our grief. As the Apostle Paul says in Romans 6, when we were baptized into Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Let us pray together. Eternal God, maker of heaven and earth, who formed us from the dust of the earth, who by your breath gave us life, we glorify you. Jesus Christ, the resurrection and the life, who suffered death for all humanity, who rose from the grave to open the way to eternal life, we praise you. Amen. Holy Spirit, author and giver of life, the comforter of all who sorrow, our sure confidence and everlasting hope, we worship you. Amen. 
To you, blessed Trinity, be glory and honor forever and ever. Please be seated. I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on my ear the song of Closes. He speaks, and the sound of his voice is so sweet that the birds hush their singing and the melody. That he gave to me within my heart is ringing, and he walks with. joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known, just a closer Jesus is my peace. sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to
Thank you. Let us pray together. O oh God of grace and glory, we remember before you today our brother Curtis. We thank you for blessing us through him on our journey through life. In your great compassion, console all who mourn. Give us faith to see Jesus' death and resurrection as the source of our confidence to live until, by your call, we are gathered home in the company of all your saints. Amen. And now I invite Curtis's daughter to come forward. Our family would like to thank you for coming today, for your kind words, prayers, and help since our dad's passing. It has brought us a lot of comfort, and after many years of saying goodbye to him, we can finally put a ribbon on his life and celebrate him today. His presence in the world will be missed, definitely. I was asked to share a few memories of my dad and this time I spent with him at the drugstore. Looking back, I think I was there a little more than the other kids. And I know I was fired and rehired multiple times, or many more than the others. It was a fun place to work while growing up, and Dad enjoyed sharing his knowledge and wisdom to teach us many life lessons. In the 70s, there were no Walmart or Kmart stores. A drugstore was the place you went to purchase most everything toiletries, personal items, greeting cards, gifts, medicines, of course, or photo finishing. There were no cell phones in those days or digital cameras. In those days, you brought your film to the drugstore and waited three days and then picked up your pictures. Gag's Drug was the family-friendly big box on Main Street. Dad and Mom spent countless hours at the store. It was open 365 days a year. Dad often worked 8 a.m. to 9 p.m., and on snow days, when most kids got the day off for fun, one of the Sorum girls was called in on duty. Dad was committed to be there always for his customers. We were trained in various jobs at the store, sweeping sidewalks, stocking shelves, dusting, dusting shelves, my favorite, ordering merchandise, waiting on customers, or making deliveries. At times, of course, there, were, there was a little complaining from us, and Dad would always say, it's not going to hurt you, or you're going to thank me someday. Turns out he was right, and Dad's standard of getting a job done right has helped each of us develop a strong work ethic and appreciation for the value of hard work. Dad loved to chat with his customers and get to know people. You, he could often be found talking over the pharmacy counter with his customers, inquiring about their lives, their families, their farms, their latest fishing trip, or he was sharing a joke followed up with a big laugh. He loved to laugh, and he loved to have fun. He was genuinely, genuinely interested in others, and as he said, he wanted to offer them the best care and advice he knew. Dad taught us the importance of treating people with kindness and respect, which we learned in part by interacting with customers at the drugstore. He encouraged us to greet the customer, ask questions to help identify what they were looking for. And if we didn't know what the product or the item was, Dad's advice was ask them what it's used for. Well, that led to some very interesting conversations as a teenager in the 70s talk about a life lesson. <laughs> Dad learned, loved to learn, and he spent his, time, his life learning new things. His goal after high school was to attend college and become a pharmacist. I'm told he breezed through college with a lot more fun than homework. Mom said he never studied. Dad was also accepted into the University of Minnesota Medical School and briefly attended while living in the Twin Cities working as a pharmacist. But two kids working full time and attending night school didn't fit in to a growing family schedule. So he dropped out and took one flying lesson. And so that chapter began. 
Learning to fly became his great, one of his greatest passions. Flying allowed dad to take us on family vacations. All four of us kids, when we were small enough to share our seat belts in the back seat of his Mooney. Go on fishing and hunting trips with his friends and travel with mom during, her during their retirement. Dad continued to learn new things until his illness wouldn't allow him to do that anymore. But mostly, Dad was full of gratitude, be it thanking his customers, family or friends, or his caregivers later in life. Dad expressed his gratitude always with a wink and a smile. We saw so much more of this in the later years of his life, and it's a gift we'll all remember the most. Gratitude, the simple act of saying thank you, can have a profound impact on another. And now I can hear my dad saying, you're gonna thank me someday. And I have sincere gratitude for all the life lessons, the love, the adventure, and memories. His life was a blessing and a gift to us all. Thank you, Cheryl. Each of us kids connected with our dad differently. There were many times I came home at curfew around 10 because I followed the rules. And my dad was sitting in his chair in front of the TV having a beverage. So I sat down with him. Johnny Carson came on the TV every night at 10.30 and dad thought he was the funniest comedian. He would belt out his machine gun laugh when Johnny did something funny. In between laughs, I heard what my dad thought about a broad range of topics, including politics, the value of education, saving money, enjoying life, and being a decent human. I don't remember contributing much to the conversation, come to think of it. But at 15, who knows what they really think? Being the oldest kid, I think he thought I needed a little more instruction. What he didn't say much about were the pranks and mischief that he used to get into as a kid in the event that I'd follow suit. He loved to have fun and mastermind adventures, even as a child. This past week, we found a grandfather's book of memories. It's priceless. In his own handwriting, Dad had answered various questions about his life. My dad wrote in the book that his favorite memories when he was growing up were of Christmas time, making lutefisk and homemade ice cream. One memorable year, he got a dart gun, and he and his brothers shot bulbs off the family Christmas tree. <laughs> Christmas made him especially happy to have us all together. He used to give each of us a personally selected gave gift. He scrounged through the store to find something special for each person in the family. Well, one Christmas, he ventured down the street to Kay's shoes and asked if he could rummage through their old shoes in the basement. The ones that didn't sell, I mean, they were ugly. He wrapped up a pair for everybody and Mom had the prize that year, a red pair of shiny platform sandals. Then he laughed his infectious laugh when we opened them. I'm sure he had more fun than we did, but nonetheless, his fun was contagious. In the book, he said one place he'd like to go to was heaven, but not today. My dad was very private about his faith. If we talked about spiritual things, he never pretended to know the answers. On my confirmation day, he had given me a ride to church early and said, this will be one of the most important days in your life. That's it, he didn't elaborate. I heard what he said though, and I believe he was trying to encourage me to grow my faith and allow it to be a significant resource in my life. It was a seemingly small thing, but it opened a door that prompted me to pursue asking for and building a faith in God throughout my life. 
My dad adored my mom. She was a very patient partner who helped him in every sense of the word. She's been referred to as a saint by her in-laws. Her devotion to him and how she visibly loved on him throughout his illness was admirable to watch. Lastly, in classic dad style, he wrote down a wish for his family. I wish for my family that we all live together in peace and harmony, treat others respectfully, and that there would be no garbage between us. And I have to think he was smiling down when four generations of his family gathered together last night and genuinely enjoyed one another's company. Thank you for celebrating his life with us today. Curtis Leroy Sorum was born on December 6, 1936, in Montevideo, Minnesota, to Alvin and Clara Anderson Sorum. He was baptized into the Christian faith on December 31, 1936, at the family farm outside of Clarkfield, Minnesota. Kurt grew up on the farm with his parents and three younger siblings, Roger, Roland, and Levon. In 1951, he confirmed his faith at Bergen Lutheran Church in rural Granite Falls. Kurt married his high school sweetheart, Rosella Rosie Hubbard, on December 21st, 1957, at Zion Lutheran Church in rural Clarkville. They spent over 66 years together and raised four children, Pam, Sandy, Cheryl, and Lee. Kurt's career took off quickly following his graduation from SDSC Pharmacy School in 1958. Kurt and Rosie moved to Cleveland, Ohio to begin his first pharmacy job at Standard Drug. In 1960, they moved the family back to Minnesota where Kurt worked at Reed Drug in Golden Valley until 1965. He then changed companies and worked for Elcott Drug in Hopkins from 1965 to 1967. It was Kurt and Rosie's dream to own their own store <coughs> and move closer to their roots. On October 1st, 1967, they bought Gag's Drug in Marshall and worked together side by side. As soon as his kids could run the cash register, they were helping out in the store. With a twinkle in his eye, Kurt worked hard and played hard. He was a conversationalist who delivered strong opinions and loved to tell stories about his travels and experiences. Kurt's stories usually had an element of adventure, risk, or, mis or mischief. Kurt loved interacting with his customers, many of whom became his friends. In 1991, Kurt and Rosie retired to spend their time at the lake cabin, travel, stay active at First Lutheran, church and enjoy time with family and friends. Kurt served as president of the Marshall Chamber of Commerce in 1971 and was on the Wiener Memorial Hospital Board for several years. He was an active member of the State of Minnesota's Pharmaceutical Association from 1960 till 2000. Two, yes. Kurt's enjoyments in life included hunting, fishing, golfing, farming, flying, and going on cruises. After a long illness with dementia, Kurt passed away peacefully on March 15, 2024, with family at his side. Kurt's illness revealed the softer side of him. He loved his family and had a special love for his wife, whom he consistently referred to as the absolute love of my life. While he could, he expressed gratitude to his caregivers and others who encouraged him in his illness. Kurt will be sadly missed. He reached the age of 87 years, three months, and nine days. Kurt is survived by his loving wife, Rosella Sorum, four children, Pamela and Randy Galbraith, Sandra and Chad Weifels, Cheryl and Kevin Evans, Leland and Holly Sorum, nine grandchildren, Hannah and Kyle Olson, Aaron and Joel Higgins, Michael and Katie Galbraith, 
Katie and Matt Stahl, Shelby and Cyrus Burchard, Leah Weifels, Nick and Ashley Evans, John Weifels, and Ben and Cheyenne Evans. Thirteen great-grandchildren, his brothers and sisters, Roger and Carol Sorum, Rowland and Carol Sorum, and LaVon Kuzman, with many nieces and nephews. He is in, preceded in death by his parents, Alvin and Clara Sorum. Blessed be his memory. I've been asked to read Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Also from the New Testament, John 3, 16, 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to, to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. For this brief gospel reading, you may remain seated. From John 14, verses 1 to 3 and 6. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. We have spoken and heard about Kurt. Let us now speak about his Savior, the one who spoke these words, the one who now speaks directly with Kurt in glory. First, I invite you to pray with me. Gracious God, be with us as we consider your promises out of scripture, as we remember this brother and your love for him. In Jesus' name, amen. To those who most loved Kurt, Rosie, Pam, Sandy, Cheryl, Lee, and families, Kurt's brothers, Roger and Rowland, sisters, sister Levon, in-laws, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, many extended family, and to all his friends as well. May the faithful, loving God be with you in these days, even when the comings and goings of your beloved don't make sense. It's been a long time in coming. Let's consider God's promises even through such things. From our gospel reading, we hear Jesus' words that he will come again and take us to himself so that where he is, we too may be. We cling to these words in faith even when we don't understand not just in the face of death, but also through life, when each little or big loss comes. And during our lifetime, and as we face death, Jesus is the way home. In life and death, Jesus is the way home for our souls, for our hearts, for us. 
From our gospel reading, we also hear Jesus' words, I am the way, the truth, and the life. We hear these words for living, for now, living well, living fully, living with guidance, understanding, light, and even restoration when it seems like there is none. And we hear these words in the face of death, for on this journey, the journey, our final journey home, we can't make it on our own. We don't know the way. We don't know how. We can't conceive it. Only in Jesus can we know the way home. Kurt knew the way home. This way home keeps us, too, as we wait in this journey and can help us get there without despairing. This way home can help us keep on living, can help us say there's joy around the corner somewhere yet again. Yes, sometime only our prayer can say things like, Jesus, be my way home. Be my truth and be my life. And from our gospel reading, we hear Jesus' words, in my father's house there are many dwelling places. Kurt has been honored and remembered for his full life here. His daughters have spoken of his many loves and adventures at home and far away, always at home, safe if you will when Rosie was near his side. His illness lasted a long time, such that none of us would ever wish that to be true for anyone. Yet he found a dwelling place somehow, and a dwelling place that allowed him still to say thanks. His illness lasted a long time, but let us also remember that the life before that was full. Let us consider, as we think of Kurt Sorum, his life at work, his life with many hobbies, his life as a father, as a husband, grandfather, great-grandfather, brother, and friend. Yes, let us remember that Kurt, who knew life fully here. And as he leaves for his new dwelling place with Jesus eternally, let us remember that he held the ability to love God and love people and know the way home. He's arrived at his home where he wanted to be, yes, perhaps prayed he could be soon in the end. And we thank God for his endurance to last through his illness. And we thank God for his push of faith to live life all the years he was able. As I conclude, I remind you that in eight days, we will sing songs like, I know that my Redeemer lives. But Kurt is now singing those words already and singing them in the company of the church triumphant, with his Lord in plain view, already seeing him face to face. Amen. Gracious God, thank you for your many promises to us. In your promises, we can live now. And in your promises, we know the way home. Amen. I invite you to stand and confess Christian faith with me using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Charting heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory I invite you to stand as you are able for the commendation. Let us commend Curtis to the mercy of God, our Maker and Redeemer. Into your hands, O oh merciful Savior, we commend your servant Curtis. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. And I invite you to receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. 
In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. And before we sing our recessional hymn, I would like to also offer a table prayer so that if you're able to stay for, with the family for luncheon, a luncheon downstairs, that we've offered this thanks together. Let us pray. Gracious God, thank you for the food we are to receive soon, and we thank you for the hands that have prepared it. We also thank you for this opportunity of fellowship together, remembering Kurt and encouraging and showing love with one another. In Jesus' name, amen. Our recessional hymn, Lift High the Cross. Thank you. 